Mary, did you know you have been on my mind? More than ever, songs and stories bearing your name and fame fill the air. They're beautiful bits of art. Each invites my spirit into hearts, minds, chapels, and living rooms. I know you are humbled by the attention. Because you never wanted this to be about you. But mother, in so many ways, it is all about you. Mary, I think of your life. The moment an angel revealed the Father's will. You were chosen not by whim, but by God. Your divine lines were written and your course set long before Gabriel appeared. I think of those three months at Elizabeth's. Two friends, two expectant mothers, both baby boys, aware of the other and the roles they would soon play. On late nights, you stayed awake under the moonlight and talked like soon-to-be mothers. You wept together, laughed together, prayed together. In the reverence of Elizabeth's home, do you remember seeing the angel Gabriel again? Do you recall visions so sacred they were not recorded? Mary, I think of that silent night, you and Joseph in Bethlehem, away from home, so tired. No room at the end, or so you were told. Your soul, body, and mind knew the time had come. As the hour slowly drew near, like a good friend approaching down a long dirt road, you rejoiced at the miracle. It filled you like a wave that grows to a flood and sweeps the earth, just as I have. I think of you swaddling me, the warmth of a tiny king pressed against your neck. I see Joseph touching my face, leaning in, his breath quick and his heart on fire. You gaze on, inches away. Then Joseph looks into my eyes and sees not his own, but the very eyes of God. Mary. I think of the sky, never clearer. I think of the manger, never holier. Multitudes of angels watched and rejoiced. Countless children of God still awaiting their grand turn, saying heavenly hosannas. Then, linked with a father on earth and a father in heaven, you raised me. The little was written of my boyhood years you and I remember. I watched Joseph master his craft. He watched me master mine. You learned to walk with me. We stood at the edge of the water. Then, years later, I walked on it. I thought of you when I tarried behind in Jerusalem. And though I knew I must stay and be about my father's business, my heart was always with you and Joseph. Even as I grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man, I remember that you and Joseph worried. I think of your prayers to the Father on behalf of your son. I also ponder the heartache that would come, my pain unprecedented in history. You ached, too, in ways no one has ever known. You stood alone as the mother of a sinless, innocent man who was crucified for all mankind. You stood for me. So many forget that I died for you, too. They've only read the stories. You lived them. Think of the anguish. It pains you how they treat the Father and me, how the world defames us. 
from a holy mansion higher than the highest clouds, you grieve at how the world shouts my name in vain. But when the world rattles in disbelief, I know my disciples will not give in. Christians will not deny me. My Christian friends of all faiths will never stop testifying that I am Lamb of God, Lord of Lords, living water, bread of life, wonderful, counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Son of God. Son of Mary. As long as I live, so lives hope. What you did in that tiny town of Bethlehem was not for naught. It wasn't to fill history books or provide a plot for films, pages, or stages. It was an act of obedience, a miracle, the beginning of the life that gave all others life, even eternal life. Yes, Mary, you have been on my mind. May the world know that without you, there is no Christ. Without Christ, there is no Christmas. Love, your Son, your Savior.